What is going on, gunfighters? Today, we're going to talk about the importance of 22 trainers for the serious shooter. Here on Gunfighter Life, the podcast where we talk about guns, tactics, shooting, ballistics the right way, with God Almighty at the center, Judeo Christian values, and real world first hand experience. As to why you should listen to what I have to say, and not because I have a bunch of followers, not because I post cool looking guns on Instagram, not because I have a microphone, because of what God's blessed me to do in regards to the topic and guns and gunfighting in general. For that reason, I put in the bio. Feel free to fast forward if you've heard it before or you don't care. While you're listening or fast forwarding, I would encourage you to like, subscribe, and leave a review of the podcast. I'll roll into a quick abbreviated bio and then into the main topic. First and foremost, I'm a Christian. I don't apologize for that. God is number one in my life. I grew up hunting and fishing in the backwoods of the southeastern United States at a very early age. Some of my earliest memories are with firearms. I joined the Marine Corps at 17, did a couple of combat tours in Iraq. By God's grace, he got me through that safely. After that, I served as an instructor, an urban warfare instructor and a desert warfare instructor for the United States Marine Corps. I also served with the LAPD, both full-time as a sworn police officer, and some more specialized assignments, as well as serving in the U.S. Army, full-time and part-time National Guard. I've been a FBI firearms instructor, still am an FBI firearms instructor, have been for a lot of years, also NRA certified and some other three-letter government agency certified. I've been a private contractor for a three-letter government agency I won't specify, I've been the commander of a tactical team in a large metropolitan area. By God's grace, he got me through all that in one piece, not because I'm better, but because he chose to have grace and mercy on me. I've been a professional hunter and guide. Professionally hunted things like buffalo and elk. Not many people today can say they've done that, but I'm blessed to be able to say that I have. I've hunted everything from white-tailed deer on the east coast to mule deer on the west coast to Gray squirrel on the east coast, a prairie dog on the west coast, and elk, and bear, and wolf, and slain all manner of beast. A state rifle and pistol champion a few times over, in a few different disciplines. Enough about me, guys. Blessed be the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war and fingers for battle. Let's get into today's topic. Now, why a twenty-two? Right? Why a twenty-two? if you're hardcore... Gunfighter, you consider 223 or 556 five, weak sauce cartridge. You're a 308 or better man. Why the humble little 22 as a training aid? Now, it seems many mainstream trainers and things like that don't really understand this because all they've ever had is the experience they've had. With being law enforcement, they were issued a Glock in 40, maybe they went to 9. That's all they ever shoot. And they're like, why would you shoot a 22? Why would you even bother? Or they were in the military and all they shot was an AR-15 and 5.56. And they think, why Why would you ever run an AR in 22? Why would you do that? That's what we're going to explore today. The importance of it and the big advantage of it is multifaceted. A big one is cost. Cost, right? If you have an ammo budget, if you're just not getting Uncle Sam to buy your ammo by the crate, I've been blessed to have those jobs. But many people don't, and I today don't, except for the training we do for work. Other than that, I buy my own ammo. So if you have an ammo budget, let's say your ammo budget after bills and gas and taxes... Is $200 a month. You got $200 a month. Just like you budget for gas or whatever. You have $200 a month budgeted for ammo. Well you can buy a lot more .22. Than you can. Any other caliber. 9mm. 556. 308. And those are the cheapest ones. 762 by 39 You get into more expensive. The disparity becomes even greater. But you can buy a lot more ammo. 
So if you've got $200 to train, depending on the skill, would you rather get 10 times as many reps in? Let's say a, a decent vanilla load for a 5.56 is talking about buying at a store, not bulk ordering, but we'll say 12 to $15 a box of 20 you can get a brick of 22, at least last time I was at the store, for 30 something dollars. A proper brick of 500 rounds. That's a big difference in cost. And again, depending on the skill, you can get a lot more reps in. For a lot of skills that you're trying to get that automaticity, trying to get that muscle memory, which is not really a thing, automaticity is the proper thing, being able to do an action without consciously thinking about everything that you're doing. That autopilot mode, which requires a lot of reps. If you're doing that for, let's say, the draw and getting a hit on target, why wouldn't you do that with the 22? If you are doing up drills, like you've got your AR slung in front of you, you grab the AR, you bring it up on target, and you get a hit on target, why wouldn't you get a lot more reps in for the money with the 22? That skill is not going to be any different, whether it's a 5.56 and 9mm or the Humble 22. It's still going to put a hole in the target where you aimed it. It's still going to reinforce that skill. right? If you're practicing the basic fundamentals of marksmanship, those are the same. That's why they're called the fundamentals, the basic fundamentals. They transcend the platform you're shooting on. There may be some subtle differences, but the big ones, sight alignment, sight picture, trigger control, trigger control, trigger control, that transform that transcends different platforms. So if you're trying to get the fundamentals down, you get a lot more practice in with the 22. Cost is a big one. Another big one is permissibility in different environments. There are a lot of shooting ranges. A lot of people, sadly, shoot at indoor shooting ranges because that's what they have. Or outdoor shooting ranges that are short range. Or they have caliber limitations. If they allow shooting, they're almost certainly going to allow 22. You may be able to train in localities and locations where you wouldn't, because they have rules against it, train with a full powered, let's say, center fire rifle. So it, open up some, it opens up more doors and opportunities to training. Even if it's not prohibited by the letter of the law, it may just be in poor taste. A 22 is a lot quieter than a lot of other guns, especially in a rifle that you're going to shoot. So maybe it's not against the law. Maybe you're just on the outskirts of town and you want to shoot, but you don't want to bother your neighbors. You might be on that cusp where a 22 long rifle is fine. It's not very loud. Whereas a center fire 5.56 in an AR is pretty loud. Shooting a 22, training with a 22 is better than not training. Another big advantage, not just the affordability of the ammo, the cost of the platform. Now these should, I'm touting these as a trainer for another platform, but guns have a service life. Barrels have a service life. I don't care what that service life is, it has a service life. In general, except for like revolvers, many times the 22 counterpart is going to be quite a bit more affordable than the center fire version. Again, if you're just doing drills that don't require the full power or don't really differentiate a skill difference between a full powered round and a 22, why not just practice with the 22? If your nice Gucci-fied Daniel Defense that's got all the cool stuff for the gram, you actually want to shoot with it and have longevity. I don't care how well that rifle is made, and I picked Daniel Defense because it's a well-made rifle. If it's got X thousand round service life, and you're just again doing the up drills or a Mozambique drill at common defensive distances. Why not put five to ten thousand rounds through it with the twenty two and save the beating up of the weapon, keep the Daniel defense going longer by putting that abuse on the twenty two? 
Also, if it's a trainer, if you put it away dirty, I mean, not really a big deal. I'm not the guy that says you got to clean your guns every time you shoot them. I'm not that guy. I don't do that. But if my 22 trainer is absolutely filthy, as long as it's still basically functioning and I put it away because I'm in a hurry to get to whatever else I'm doing in life, not a big deal. It's not a gun that I generally go to to defend my life with. I can keep my other gun pretty pristine and clean. So I think that touts some of the advantages and the importance of a 22 trainer for the serious shooter. Now, some things are not going to translate as well, right? If you're doing a bill drill, which is six rounds really quick, getting your hits on target basically as quick as you can, yeah, there's going to be a pretty big disparity between your 22 and your 9mm. I totally concede that. It's not perfect. It's not a one-to-one ratio. For that drill, you probably want to train often with your actual center fire firearm. I just want to be honest with that. It's not a perfect solution. If you're practicing your target transitions, like one hit, transition to another target, one hit, doesn't really matter the recoil because you should be recovered from that recoil by the time you transition to the new target. You're talking about like two and then transition and then two. Obviously, it's going to be different with the center fire. If you're practicing your handgun reloads and you're going to shoot one, reload, shoot one, which is a real common drill on the timer doesn't really matter the recoil because after that shot breaks you're doing the reload and that is not going to affect the speed of the second shot you're just practicing your reloads not really a big deal now if you're practicing something like an el prez and el presidente absolutely there's going to be a big disparity in your time between the 22 and the center fire so again it's not one to one but it's a for for a lot of things and a lot of the core things It is absolutely, I think, worth having a 22 trainer. What is going on there, Gen Pop, the general audience? This is only part of this episode. The rest of the episode, the practical application, good practices, how to put this into real world application, that's on Patreon. Dropped on Patreon before you got this. They had it early. They had it ad-free in total. The total episode. If you want to step up from general audience to patron, I would encourage you to do that. For the rest of this episode, and here's just a few things that dropped this week on Patreon. Top 5 ARs on the market in 2024. Ammo review and chat. Get to the point, as in knives. Twilight Zone. What if Camilla Harris becomes president? Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Trapping as part of your survival and bug-out plan. Reverse engineering a gun purchase. Those are just a few of the episodes on Patreon coming out this week that you're missing out on if you're not a patron. So step up from Gen Pop. Be part of the tribe. There should be a Patreon link in the show notes. I hope to see you there. Announcement for listeners. I'm going to try something new on the podcast. It's important to look at oneself soberly, circumspectly, see what one could do better. I think it's fair to say, by most measures, I put out quite a bit of content. A lot of podcasters do once a week. I've been doing, at least on weekdays, daily shows for quite a while, putting those out. And the podcast has grown, and I'm very blessed by that. But on things I could do better, things I could improve, I thought mistakenly that if I just grew the podcast and listenership, that that percentage of people that became patrons would grow. That doesn't seem to be the case, although I'm very blessed and have gotten a few more patrons has not grown in direct proportion. I have, you know, cashed out retirement accounts, took on another job, private security contracting, which makes quite a bit more money than the podcast. But if I want the podcast to grow, if I want it to make enough money that one day and make it the primary source of income, I should do something different. So here's the idea. Hopefully, Put out at least one new episode 
a week on the general podcast platforms. Now there may be more, but one a week. Because I think there's a substantial portion out there that thinks if I can get an episode every day for free, why would I go and pay for it? Fair. So we're going to try this at least for a while and see if it helps. Now, if you're a fairly new listener, there's episodes on the major podcast platforms that go back to 2019. There's a lot of content. So if you're a new listener, that shouldn't be an issue for a while. If you go back and listen to all those episodes and you want more, then hopefully you consider the podcast being worth something to you. I don't expect you to work for free. It is written, you shall not muzzle the ox while it treads out the grain, and a laborer is worthy of his wages. I don't expect you to you know, fix my car for free, or I don't have grass, I live as a nomad, but if I did, I wouldn't expect you to come cut my grass for free. So if you think the podcast is worth something, something worth supporting, you want the greater amount of content, go to Patreon. There should be a Patreon link in the show notes. And I shouldn't assume that you know what Patreon is. Patreon is a crowdsource funding way to support somebody that you care about their content. Sign up for a monthly amount. You can sign up for $5. You can sign up for more. And you'll get access not just to the new stuff, but all the old stuff too. And there's a lot of content on there. As of the time of this recording, there's over 1,300 posts on Patreon. There's a lot of content on there that's only for patrons. Some of that is Patreon-only episodes. Some of that is... Which, by the way, is commercial free. So if you're tired of those, that might be worth a few bucks right there. Some of it is written content. Some of it is photo. Some of it is video. If you're already on Patreon, you already know about it. It's good shepherd training on Patreon. You should recognize it when you see it. If you do not want to become a monthly subscriber, you don't like monthly subscriptions, there's a small subset to whom that is the case. I will put many episodes on there a la carte. There is a shop on there. You can go buy an episode. Pick and choose like this episode looks good. You can purchase that episode and listen to it. There's other things on there as well. But if you just want an episode, if you want to see what's new, because it's been a while or you're used to a new episode every day, go there and check out. Go to Patreon. You don't have to put in your credit card or anything to check out Patreon. Click the shop button, and you can do a one-time thing if you don't want to do a monthly purchase. We're going to try that for a while, see how it works. Hopefully, it drives up the number of patrons. I really hope to see you there. So scroll down and hit that Patreon link in the show notes.